Hey, good morning. Welcome back to the book of Philippians. Today we're in Philippians chapter 1, verses 9 to 11. Let's read them, then we'll think about it together and pray. And this I pray, that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and all discernment, that you may approve the things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ, to the glory and praise of God. So, Paul is still giving the introduction to his letter. Notice what he prays about and how he prays. He's asking God that their love may abound more and more. So he starts with love, and then he talks knowledge, discernment, and things that are excellent. So a lot of times we want to narrow it down to just one category or something here, but Paul, when he talks about love, he talks about its expression in knowledge, its expression in discernment. And so we want to be Christians who are loving others, but loving with discernment, loving with knowledge, a knowledge of, of God's will as it's revealed in his word. And then this comes to a purpose because the next says that you may approve the excellent things. See, that you may approve the things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense until the day of Christ. And so we want to live a Christian life, a joyful and a happy life. And we can do that. Some people think that you can't live a life that will please God. Every single thing we do, they emphasize, is, is, is tainted by sin. Well, if that's true, somebody really needs to talk to Paul about this and get this corrected before he puts it in the Bible. Because Paul says here, he wants you to approve the things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense. Did you hear that? Without offense till the day of Christ. So we can live in a way that is pleasing to God. We can live in a way that has a victory in the Christian life, the Christian experience. We can live in a way that isn't corrupted by sin, but we can live in a way that is considered to be righteous and appropriate. Notice again uh, the last verse in our section, verse 11, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. So we can be filled with the fruits of righteousness. Now, filled sounds like there's a lot, right? You fill a shopping cart, it's overflowing to the top, right? Being filled with the fruits of righteousness. That's God's plan for us. That's not his plan for us 10,000 years from now. I mean, that'll be true too. But he wants us in this life, in this time, in this world, in this witness that we're living out, he wants us to be filled with all the fruits of the righteousness of Christ, living sincere and blamelessly. So you can see here that God's plan for his people is, is powerful. Paul is bringing them up. He's calling them up to the higher ground. He's reminding the Philippians, this is God's plan for you. And I remind you and I rem remind myself today, this is God's plan for us. We can live this way and we should exert ourselves to the fullest to follow Jesus in such a way that these these things are true in us, that the righteousness that is the that we are that we are filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ. Let's pray about that even right now. Dear Father in heaven, help us to be filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ. Help us in loving to love in a way that is discerning, that loves in a way that is evaluating things and measuring our behavior of love in the light of the scriptures. Thank you for giving us this insight, Lord. Thank you that these are gifts and realities for your church today. If we'll just reach out and be purposeful about receiving them, bless your people, Lord. Bring us up higher. Thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. God will do that for me, and he'll do that for you this day if we keep in the love of God.